Virtues make our life better. Let us ponder on our virtues. Virtues for life. Hello and welcome to Virtues for Life. I am Sister Denise and this program is a conversation between different Brahma Kumars and Kumaris from all over the world about virtues. Virtues are the foundation of our lives. A person who brings in the spiritual dimension to their lives and works on cultivating qualities, values, virtues and powers within themselves, these are the things that define who that person is and what their contribution to society and to the world can be. The laws of spirituality have told us that personal change is the main way to bring about positive global change. And so in this conversation, we are going to be looking today at the virtue of appreciation. I have with me in the studio today, Margaret Barron. Mm -hmm. Sister Margaret, welcome to Virtues for Life. Thank you very much, nice to be here. Good to have you here. Margaret is a personal trainer. She is based at the International Centre of the Brahma Kumaris in London and she works with adults as an adult educator and also you do a great deal of spiritual service within the world of the Brahma Kumaris service projects. Now, um, Perhaps we could begin by trying to define what appreciation really is. I think it's a really deep thing, but maybe in essence, it's what you give value to. And um, I remember once um, one of our spiritual teachers, seniors, um, saying to me, appreciate your goodness. And I think actually that is a very nice definition of appreciation. So do I value goodness? But also, I think in what you were just saying, appreciating oneself, Starts sometimes there. we don't. Yes, I think it, that, you know, I think really the spiritual journey is about, the start of the spiritual journey is learning to appreciate yourself. And the ending of the spiritual journey is completely accepting um, yourself and, and your, all your goodness as you do everybody else. I mean, that's probably the end of the journey. So it, it, it is a journey to get there. <laughs> Sometimes we become very uh, ill at ease with our shortcomings yeah. and we feel inadequate and that we will not come up to the mark, we will yeah. fail uh, and then we become caught up in being not good enough. Yes. Um, yes, deep this thing. this uh, message of you are not good enough, it's very much part of our culture. Uh, I think many people are trained to be perfectionistic and then we can't appreciate anything. Yeah, I, I think it's um, many, and you, you, hear it, you hear it in your own language to yourself because we all have to live with our own internal the dialogue. Self, yeah, yeah the But you also hear it in language, um, language for others, from others. Can you that, give some examples of how, how that would be? Well, you know, talking about, you know, not good enough. I mean, you know, in, in people, they might have done well in their profession. I'm thinking of one person in particular who's done well in their profession. They now sort of um, head of a department, um, you know, their life from the outside looks fine. You know, the little picket fence kind of <laughs> life in the country. Um, but some of their language, you can tell um, it's not good enough. You know, I'm, I'm not good enough. Uh, there's a maybe, and that kind of is very linked to comparison. Okay. It's very linked to comparison. And I, I see comparison, whether you're doing it to yourself or you, you hear others doing it about themselves with others, it's almost like the beginning of the slippery slide that disempowers us, that takes us away from our 
self-appreciation. So I compare myself with you and I'm either better than you or you're better than me. If I'm better than you, that's okay until I find somebody who looks better than me, then I'm not okay yeah. anymore. That's I mean, it goes either way, doesn't it? You, mm. you put yourself higher or lower than. And um, Is there something wrong with being on the same level? No. No, but, and I think that's what spirituality is, is encouraging, isn't it? That, you know, when we, and maybe it's going back to, we discussed another time this human being and we focused on the human being. I mean, we put so much energy and thought power and actions into getting it right that we want it to be right. And of course that makes us kind of compare with us, is it right? But when you go to the other side and you look at the being, in that way, we, we've all got goodness inside us. We've all got beauty inside us. We all want to express it. And maybe that's what keeps us on the equal. Sometimes a person uh, says, I'm not appreciated. I did all this and on that and the other and so on, and nobody appreciates me. And then they become depressed by feeling unappreciated. How uh, should we work with such feelings and thoughts? I think in those situations, if I look back, because I think we've you know, on the spiritual journey, you go, go through every, everything like that. And um, if I look back to the times when maybe I felt that, and I think it's because I didn't appreciate myself. And, you know, when you, when you aren't appreciating your own goodness, then you want feedback from others. You want someone else to say, oh, you were good, or you did that good. In other but, words, it's self-doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas if you're, if you're appreciating your own goodness and the expression of that goodness, it, that's enough. And I think that is going back to what you mentioned earlier, that we're not good enough. You know, in a way, simply because we exist, we're good enough. It's well, not based on doing. Who sets these standards, you know? What, if, if I say I'm not good enough, um, it means I've got a, an idea of what is good enough, but it's somehow never attainable. How do we deal with this unattainability of being good enough? Well, m maybe, you know, we, we crumble at this word perfection. And maybe um, if we thought a bit more about just being the best that I can be, would be more, seem more attainable. And well, then if that's... Isn't, isn't being the best that I can be, that's not good enough right there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's something to do with expectations. True. I think it's exp expectations that have come from when we we're very young and I think this whole feeling of not being good enough, you know, we've grown up with it, you know, whether it's from our parents or our peer group or our teachers, you so know, these, our society. So these unattainable standards, where do they come from? I think they just come through our history in a way. They just come through maybe um, religion, um, society, you know, different different aspects of that have made it um, made us want to, you know, that, but on the other side, I think, you know, religion has also given us something very high, like human excellence. Yes. And so we, because what we think, what, what, what do we think we'll get when we, when we have that human excellence? We, it goes we'll back okay. to, we'll be okay again. We'll be feel peaceful. We'll be happy. We'll be loved. And it's, so it's, but if I haven't kind of gone inside and discovered that for myself, as part of myself, I'll always be wanting it. You're a teacher and, you know, one of the things that um, a lot of people have a problem with, sometimes it's fatal, exams. Um, I was with a, a group of students at uh, a university in Gujarat quite recently and the biggest problem that the students have is the looming exams mm. and um, if you're second you failed mm. you know. yes and it's such uh, a pressure so is that um, necessary why why um, is there so much importance given to exams do they really show that you are good enough well i saw something funny it went around the internet and it was basically about what, what do you remember, you know, 20 years after school? And, you know, it's so much pressure for these people to, to achieve a certain standard and maybe a certain subject, but how much of it is really relevant to life? And, and you know, most of the groups that I'm educating or with are um, adults 
And often they look back and they think, why didn't we learn what we're learning here in school? It would have been so much more useful to us. You know, how do I conduct myself with other people? How do I nurture myself? How do I control my mind? Yeah, you never learn that in school. No, that, that, they were saying, why, why didn't we learn this in school? Because we learned, you know, arithmetic and history and all these things, but did it really serve us? Whereas these things, I could have saved myself so much suffering, you know, for the last 20 years if I had known so some of these So perhaps we bases. need to take a really good, long, hard look at education. And perhaps this whole thing of um, virtues is part of the edu education in how to be a, a balanced um, human being who is comfortable inside their own skin, comfortable with themselves. And um, uh, this this thing that you brought up of comparison, um, is this not uh, uh, counterproductive for healthy society, but yet it's everywhere around us? Um, I would say yes. I think if, if everyone could move into that place where they really um, appreciated their own uniqueness and what they could offer to society, if we had a culture that didn't put this is this is the look that you need and this is the kind of education you need if it was more about um, let's kind of encourage or nurture everyone's unique contribution to the world so what you are is fine I, I think that um, Brilliant. Uh, there is this feeling inside people um, that I'll never be able to be acceptable to God or um, I'll never be a success or, you know, and, and it, it may be contributing to a lot of the, the depression that mm. there is in the world today and this sort of unwillingness to even try because of a sense of that I will fail because I won't be the best. Um. Well, I only can talk from my own experience and I, you know, you mentioned God and I mean, I've spent 20 years kind of nurturing um, that relationship um, with God, God, the supreme, the divine, whatever word is comfortable for people. And what I've experienced in that, in that relationship is almost supreme encouragement. Yeah. You know, it's kind of the opposite of what you think because, you know, you think, oh, God's so high, so, you know, perfect. And completely different in my personal relationship. I feel like I've been encouraged, I've been inspired, I've been supported to grow. It's almost like God knows where we're at. So he in, knows we're in, not perfect. In so God's eyes, you're good enough. Well, he, I think he holds a potential. Mm -hmm. I think he says, I'm going to accept you right now as you are but I'm going to hold a very high potential of you. And I think he does it for everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, you know, if you're totally accepted as you are um, and you feel that and someone's holding, but hang on, you can, I can encourage you or inspire you to move forward. Then that gives you a kind of sense of, well, let me try. But if I'm not, if I'm, if I feel I'm not accepted, I think that's the whole angst yes. that stops us progressing. We, we're sort of stuck in, I'm not good enough. Now, if we um, start cultivating the virtue of appreciation and we appreciate this and we appreciate that and we appreciate everybody, um, does that not put us into a situation where we might think everybody else is great, you know, and I'm virtuous and you lose contact with yourself? I think it can happen if you don't nurture that self-appreciation and I think that is part of the spiritual practice is to you know, wake up in the morning and almost set your own consciousness, I am, and you set your consciousness as I am that being of love, I am that being of peace, I am that, that being of joy and you sort of set yourself in your own strength and then I think appreciation of others comes from that from you know they say you know if you spot it you've got it so and I like that a lot it works either way with positive or negative yeah. you know you can't see a negative in someone without it being inside you but it's the same with appreciation yeah. that in a way what what you what you're nurturing or the culture that we're nurturing in, in, a, in a spiritual study is that 
we, we see goodness in other people. Not, oh, they're better than me because they got that, but hey, look, they're, look what they're nurturing in themselves. And where has that come from anyway? It's come from something higher. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've got it and they're using, oh, I could, I could use a bit of that in my life. I could use a bit of patience in my life. I could use a bit of, oh, I could use a bit of delight. I could use a bit of wonder. You know? So if we aren't appreciating ourselves and we start appreciating other people, we're going to go out of balance. Yeah, collapse. Let's talk about one of the things I've been noticing in uh, my conversations with different Brahma Kumaras and Kumaris about virtues is we can never just limit ourselves to one. No. Uh, they're so intertwined with other things. Um, what, is, what does a virtuous person look like? Well, it's a bit like a sparkly diamond. I think that they, you know, they're like a diamond and, and a diamond is multifaceted. And it's almost like um, a virtuous person kind of um, almost with a, very naturally knows how to be in each situation because some situations call for you to be completely present with someone listening. Maybe you have to be silent. Other situations um, call for you to be compassionate. Other situations need patience and tolerance. Other situations, you know, need delight if you're with children or whatever. So I think a virtuous person, it's not holier than thou or anything like that. It's just they know how to be appropriate in every situation. So could you say that virtues are a kind of skills of being? Yes, that's a very beautiful way of, of putting it. And I think it is, and, 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 you know, as you mentioned, that they're all connected in a way. And I think if you even worked on one virtue, the others would have to come into play. Mm -hmm. Like, even when we're talking about appreciation, the other side of the coin is acceptance. Yes. You know, if you don't accept someone, you're not going to appreciate their goodness. You have to first accept this is who they are. And then you start to see, oh, look at these lovely facets they have. But without acceptance, you're going to be seen you're going to be in resistance to them. Um, sometimes we find ourselves in situations of conflict. And um, maybe, you know, another person's perspective is very different from ours. Um, is appreciation going to help us in conflict resolution? To appreciate another one's perspective or what they're seeing or... I think so. I think it's um, also appreciating that the the actual core of um, each one, you know, mentioning what we were talking about before, is that each one really, in their life, they want to experience peace, they want to experience love, they want to experience happiness. So, you know, we have different ways of um, wanting to understand that and ex experience it for ourselves. And we've come from different cultures, we come from different backgrounds. And so our way of experiencing it may be different, but I think it's all the same thing. And when we understand that, then when we're in situations, um, it's looking for those common denominators. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I'm looking for difference, then I'll see difference. But if I'm looking for, what's the, what's the common goal here? What's, what's, what will unite us? What, how can I cooperate? Yes. That these things take away all those conflicts. But when we're thinking, I'm going to stand, you know, in my space and you're going to stand in your space, then, then it leads to conflict. But I think conflict is really just the absence of peace and love, <laughs> isn't it? Really? And harmony. Anyway. You know, when you've got harmony, you're not going to have conflict. So it, it's my choice whether I act in a way that I unite and bring together or I, I let my ego, because that's really what it is in conflict, it's two egos, isn't it? Whether yeah. I let my ego have its say. Um, if we, um, say, appreciate another person's point of view, but we don't agree with it, um, how, how will we, you know, I'm looking here for, I think, a goal of living together in harmony, yes. you know? Uh, agreeing to differ, yeah. things like that. Um, because sometimes when a person says or feels unappreciated, they often also say, well, I'm not, they don't understand me. Yes. They don't know who I am. They can't see me, you know. So I think that feeling of being unappreciated 
uh, can create a, a kind of isolation, mm. which creates a difficulty in um, in human relationships. What about um, circumstances, tests? Uh, oh well, I've got my little list of those. You know, I, I see that there's you know there's the tests, there's the challenges of life, there's the obstacles, and then there's the exams. And we're all going to get them all. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is with the tests, you know, in a way, the tests are kind of, to me, the little things in life, but we can lose a lot of energy through those. So, and then we don't have so much for the kind of bigger things that come. So, um, in my own personal practice, it's often I just think, Margaret, just let it go. It's not really a big thing. It's not important. So that's another very good virtue, actually, letting go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's like, if you've got an aim, and I think sometimes when we go through life, we haven't got an aim, and it would be a bit like the boat without the rudder. But if you've got an aim of what you want to experience that day, or, you know, a aim for your life, then you start to kind of see, does getting involved in this thing bring me keep me in line with my aim or enhance my aim yeah. or does it take away it'll and I think, scatter you all together yeah. that's it but i think sometimes we if we don't have an aim then you know we get involved in things without meaning to so what would be your aim for today for example well i think i'm gonna have a day of appreciation <laughs> you know just so anyway, it's that can be your aim you wake up in the morning and you 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 put in front of yourself how do i want to live today how, what would I like to experience? What kind of day? I mean, I remember um, actually, it's an amazing situation. I remember once having to go to court with someone and I, I, I had this um, uh, bowl of virtue. So I picked delight and I thought, now that is a really interesting virtue to go to court with. You know? <laughs> but actually, I thought, wow, why not? Let's just trust it, go with delight. And it's interesting, in the end of the day, the court thing didn't happen and we had a delightful day. Oh, nice. So, you know, <laughs> um, you know, you just, it's like just riding with something. Yeah. But if we don't have this aim, in a way we go through life vacant, I am what? And then I can pick up anything from anyone. Mm -hmm. But if I at least have in the morning sort of qualified, I am an appreciative person or whatever it is, you know, um, then it just gives us that aim. And then we, you know, and then we notice we've got a marker. If we're going off track, We've got a marker to come back onto. Yeah, that's because, very good. Because you know, when the tests come, sometimes you do go a bit off. Mm. You you maybe say something or do something, and you think, oh. But rather than going into the big regret and the guilt and the thing, which is again what you talked about earlier about the unworthy, we think, okay, let me get back on track again. And that's I think what it's about is about continually bringing yourself back on track. And if you've got an aim, and you appreciate that aim, it allows you to do that. Sometimes in relationships or in families or work or groups of people who work together, you have somebody who's just, you don't want them, you don't like them, you don't agree with anything they do, you don't like their personality. How do you appreciate somebody that you really don't appreciate? Well, I think they become your great teachers in life, aren't they? Tell they, more. Um, I think we all have those. We have those, those people in life that press our buttons, we can call it that. Um, that's a very nice way of putting it, but it's my buttons that's been pressed. And actually for the spiritual practice or in life in general, you actually need those people. Sometimes they can be one person and collectively we all have to work with them in our own way. Mm. Or we could have someone that someone else gets on fine with, but they just press my buttons. So it shows that it's something about me, you know. But I think actually you need that. It's almost like you need something to be all, always working with because then you start to see how, how spirituality works. If you never had the tests or challenges or the exams, you would never really see how in practice it works because, and, and we all have had that. We all have had people who we've had to live with that were difficult, you know, I sat down, they stood up, all this kind of thing. And um, when I look back at those times in my life, I could see how they really were there to grow me. Mm. They were there to grow me. And so I, appreciation is not just only for the good things, it's also for the bad things. Um, now, is there anything bad though, really? Is there anything bad? It's about, point. It's. I, I don't know if there's anything bad, it's maybe different. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and and continuous learning. Yeah. And you need both. You need, yeah. you know, but maybe it's all neutral, really, and it's only what goes on in my head that makes it good or bad. Sometimes people get very caught up in injustice. How would appreciating uh, or the virtue of appreciate, appreciation work when you are grappling with a perceived injustice? Yeah, I think it's a difficult one. Um, but I think everything has its time and ultimately everything works out. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's about often the, the external injustice is hitting the thing in me that I have to work on. Right. And as I start to work on that and change that and soften that, I've got something better to give back. But often we get caught up in the injustice and we go into the negative about it. Oh, it shouldn't be like this. It oughtn't to be like that. And, and that then you're away from your, your you gratitude. Come out of, you come out of your, your truth. So I think appreciation is, you know, that everyone um, in life is there to learn something. And even sometimes when there's We've seen it, even in situations which were a terrible um, um, situation for people, there's always some people who shine from that. Mm -hmm. It brings out their strength. I remember listening to someone who survived the sinking of the Titanic, <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and they said um, a statement that's really stuck me. They said, on that night, I saw the greatest heroes. I also saw the greatest cowards. Same situation. Margaret, we're running out of time. Thank you so much for your wisdom, your very practical insights, and I think you have really shone a beautiful light on the virtue of appreciation. So thank you for being thank on you. Virtues for Life today. And thank you to all of those of you who have been participating in this conversation. Values, virtues, powers, qualities, appreciate your life, appreciate your situation. Let us ponder for a moment on what we have all around us and really appreciate that it does have a place. It's there as a teacher, as a reminder, as something that'll help us to grow and prosper and become the very best that we can be. I look forward to seeing all of you very soon and thank you once again and Om Shanti.